One of the questions I get asked all the time is, how long does it really take to bring a new electronic product to market? Well, the simple answer is probably longer than you think. The more accurate answer is, well, it really depends, and it depends on three key variables. It's really important that you understand these variables and how they impact development time so you can get your product to market as fast as possible. So in this video, I'm going to sh first share with you these three variables and why they are important to determine development time. But don't worry, after I reveal these three critical variables, I'll give you some concrete estimates on how long it will take you to bring your specific electronic product to market. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm an engineer, entrepreneur, and the founder of Predictable Designs. The first critical variable that I want to talk about is the product itself. In fact, the product itself is likely the most critical variable that determines the time to market. The more complex the product is, the longer it will take to develop and scale to manufacturing, regardless of the resources or expertise on your team. One of the best ways to reduce your time to market and the cost to market is to simplify your product. As a small startup company, you want your product to be as feasible as possible to bring to market. Product complexity is a black hole for hardware entrepreneurs and startups. Bringing a simple product to market is hard enough, and bringing a complex product to market is exponentially more difficult. Even what you think is a, quote, simple feature can often dramatically increase the development cost and time. For example, one, one of my members shared his product details to get some technical feedback on the concept. He was a really technical-minded guy and had spent some serious time specifying his product in great detail. But he didn't really understand all the future consequences of the features that he had specified for his product. Well, after looking at his product specification, I immediately explained to him that one feature of his product was driving up all of his development cost and time. In fact, I estimated that this one feature, which was wireless charging, made his product about three times as complex to bring to market. You know what? This feature wasn't even necessary. It was just a cool, nice to have feature that could be easily replaced by a less complex equivalent feature. This small feature change saved him at least a year of development time and likely tens of thousands of dollars in development cost. It also drastically reduced the complexity of the required electrical certifications. Unless you've been through the entire process from idea to market, there's no way you can know all of the implications that various features will have way down the road. This is why you need to talk with those who have been through the whole process. Keep in mind that asking your primary developer to help simplify your product kind of creates a conflict of interest. A developer has no self-interest in helping you simplify your product. The more complex the product, the more money they are likely to get paid. This is why I recommend that you work with experts independent of your primary developers to help you simplify your product. Okay, the second variable that's really important to determining how long it's going to take you to get to market, that's sometimes even more important than the product itself, and that variable is you. Yes, you are one of the biggest determining factors to how long it will take you develop, to develop and manufacture your product. The truth is no one will ever work as hard or as fast as you or your co-founders. If you have all of the necessary technical skills to develop your own product, then doing it yourself is probably going to be the fastest way to get to market. But it's rare that you're going to know how to do everything yourself, and you're likely going to have to learn a lot of new skills. For example, the hardware product that I brought to market myself back in 2010 required significant mechanical designing and 3D modeling. Since I'm by training an electronics engineer, I ended up hiring a mechanical engineer to help develop the mechanical aspects of my product. But being an excited entrepreneur, I wanted things to move fast. I was very impatient and I'm sure the engineer that I hired thought I was a pain to work with. 
Okay, well, in fact, I know he thought that because he rudely told me to quit bothering him so much. So I ended up firing him and switching to another mechanical engineer. But once again, the second engineer was not fast enough for me either. Finally, I decided to teach myself 3D modeling and how to design for injection molding so I could finish the mechanical design myself. This helped to drastically speed up the development of my product. There are two morals to this story. First, no one can ever outwork an excited, hyper-focused entrepreneur with a vision. Second, knowledge is power. So the more you learn, the more likely you are to succeed and to succeed quickly. Okay, the third variable that is really critical to determine how long it's going to take you to get your product to market and this is usually one that most entrepreneurs immediately fixate on, yet it's rarely the most important variable. What I'm talking about here is money. Although you and your product are the most critical factors impacting the time to market, of course money is also important. That being said, careless use of money may actually increase the time to market. This is especially true for first-time product entrepreneurs. Don't make the mistake of throwing lots of money at a problem you do not fully understand. For example, if you have done no prior prototypes, nor have you spoken with any real potential customers, then throwing thousands of dollars at a large design firm to design your product is a recipe for failure and very likely bankruptcy. If you have no technical skills to do the work yourself, then how much you have to spend is a more important factor since you will need to outsource product development. You're going to need to be extra careful, though, to ensure that not only are you getting a good design for your money, but also that you are designing the product that your customers actually want to buy. OK, I know everything I've said so far is kind of ab abstract and you probably want some real concrete numbers on how long it's going to take you to get your product to market. If you have an experienced product developer on your founder team and you have a product of moderate complexity, then best case, you should be able to get your first prototype within probably three to six months and a final works like, looks like prototype within maybe nine to 12 months. If you don't have the development expertise on your team, then you can expect these times to be extended. The same is true if your product is exceptionally complex. And if you don't have the expertise in-house, nor the money to outsource development, then of course you can expect it to take, take much longer to get to a final prototype. I would suggest that you allocate an additional six months or so after completing the final prototype to also get your product certified and set up for mass manufacturing. If you like this video, then be sure to check out this video here where I review all of the costs required to develop, scale, and manufacture a new electronic hardware product. And then in this video here where I share my own worst day ever on my journey to bring my own product to market.